let us have another look at ice ages. Okay, what do we mean by an ice age? Okay, it's about glaciers. Let's have a look at the distribution of glaciers, the ice extent, at the end of the last ice age, at the last glacial maximum. Let's, let's do that first. Okay. And how we can do that is we can look at the sediment deposits in so-called moraines. And moraines are uh, floating ice sheets, uh, glacier flow, and the bed load transport, the transport of sediments and rocks in these glaciers. Okay? Because what we can do is we can find, we can derive the spatial extent by looking at the sediment de deposits in the so-called terminal moraine. It's, it's essentially the front of the of this glacier flow. Okay, it's shown here in the sketch, the terminal moraine, and all we need to do is try to you know date uh, rocks in particular regions or the special type of rocks that you can find, and you can reconstruct the locations of the terminal moraines. All right, and this is done here in this in this sketch. This is the reconstructed glacier extent at the last. Glacial, glacial maximum about 21,000 years ago. And you can see in the in the northern hemisphere that there's a dramatic uh, ice coverage reaching into the mid-latitudes. You know, more pronounced over North America than it is over over North, uh, 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 northern Europe. You can see, but there's a dramatic change of the ice ages, and particularly if you look at England. Okay, so there's in the southern hemisphere it's less dramatic, but it's a significant uh, increase of the coverage of regions with sea ice. And you can you can see that here too. And that's about twenty one thousand years ago. Again, this is when we're talking about an ice age. This is about as extreme as it can get. Okay. Little influences on the on the climates near the near the equator. Okay, but we talked about that before. I show you another map. Okay, it was very similar. Just looking now from focusing on the on the northern hemisphere, looking from above the the North Pole. Okay, you see the maximum extent of 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 the ice age, continental and sea ice on the left. You can see the sea ice in the uh, in the Arctic Ocean. You know, and you can see two large, uh, three large ice sheets: the Eurasian ice sheet, the Laurentide ice sheet, and there's another one up here. Okay, three big ice sheets. Today's continental and sea ice uh, extent is different. Continental ice much smaller, and the sea ice extent somewhat larger because you didn't have that big ice shelf reaching over across the the, uh, the Arctic Ocean. All right, let's focus on ice core data. And can I show you one uh, one um, figure that I discussed before? And this is about an ice core taken from Antarctica. This is the Antarctic Vostok ice core, and where you can reconstruct the past 800,000 years. Okay, and this is a temperature reconstruction. The past is on the left side. Okay, this is 800,000 years ago, and today is on the right side. And you can see temperature variations okay, at that location, okay, Antarctic 
temperature, air temperature variations of about up to 10, 12 degrees Celsius. Okay? You can identify times when you had a warm climate, so-called warm interglacials, and you had, you had uh, at times where you had cold conditions. That's what we call ice ages. In this context, I also show you the length of the Greenland ice core in terms of time. The Greenland ice core, okay, or there are actually two ice cores, but anyway, they cover around 123,000 years, which is about that, that uh, 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 period. Okay? So you don't get much uh, ice uh, age variations with that Greenland ice core. You only capture it a little bit of time. There's actually something important that you can learn here. If you want to uh, resolve a cycle, uh, of a given time scale, you actually need about five to ten times the cycle length in order to resolve it. Okay, and that's a very, very important principle. You know, it's a very, very important principle. Okay, so we only have the Antarctic ice core that that reproduce these these ice ages. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's now continue. Let's focus on some other features. Let's look at CO2 reconstructions of the Antarctic ice core. Okay, CO2 reconstructions. The past is on the left. Okay, and you can see a uh, temperature change is, is shown here in, the, uh, in this lower level. It's the same curve that I showed you before, but here it's actually illustrated in terms of colors where do we have the warm phases and where we have the cold phases. You can see in red, warm, and blue, cold. And above that is the atmospheric CO2 from ice cores. And you can see that there is a direct correspondence. You can see the same pattern if you compare CO2 with the temperature change. Okay, So they, are, they seem to be in tandem. Okay, they seem to be intended, and you should also focus on what do we have today? We crossed the 400 parts per million, and so during no time during the past 800,000 years did we have concentrations that we have today. You can see that dramatic differences in CO2 concentrations of what humans introduce to the atmosphere as opposed to what we had during the Ice Age variations. A closer look actually reveals in this example that the temperature signal actually precedes the CO2 changes in Antarctica. Yeah, the CO2 changes actually lack temperature changes in the Southern Hemisphere. And that confused scientists initially. It also, you know, it was confusing initially. And we talk about that, that, that a little bit later on. All right. So that's not, that's not all. We can also look at, on the next slide, look at methane. Okay? Methane is shown here in the bottom level. It shows you the variation, and then you find very, very similar variability. You know, when one is at a peak, the other one is at a peak. You can see very, very similar, similar cycles. So there is a close correlation between the these anomalies of CO2 and methane. Again, we also show it here for over the past thousand years, and then what happened in the past few tenths of years big changes in methane and CO2. We never had these levels before. They were unprecedented in the past 800,000 years. That's, that's how, how dramatic it is. And you will learn all about 
why that is. We will learn about in future lectures that CO2 and methane are greenhouse gases. That's the ones that actually influence the temperature on Earth. Okay? So the more CO2 you have in the atmosphere, the warmer is the climate. And methane, it's exactly the same. All right. So is there anything more? There is one thing more. It's just... And that's what we do if you focus on the transition after the last ice age. And this is a little focus on the last something like 25,000 years. And this last slide of this part, let's do it again. Okay. And you can see that the um, CO2 concentration was around 200 parts per million okay, during the the last glacial maxi maximum. And then there was a warming event, okay, and an increase in CO2. Okay, and these warming events are actually triggered by the Milankovitch uh, cycles. Okay, and then you can see there was an increase of CO2 and the global global temperature and until we come into the into the era of human-induced uh, global warming. And this is the end of the second part of this topic.